When the NFL brought touchdown celebrations back to the gridiron, there were only two players with enough rhythm to pull off their 2018 Super Bowl spot. Yours truly, and Odell. Is he going to do a number on the crowd here? Touchdown! Well, that'll draw a flag. NFL sent a video to teams yesterday warning them about celebrations. They took them away. I remember Terrell Owens having a pen stuck in his sock, a Sharpie. After he scored a touchdown, pulled the Sharpie out. And autographed the ball. There have been some where they pose, and one of them is a photographer. And it is a touchdown. At least the celebration is on. And the NFL said, we're going a little too far with these celebrations. It's becoming all about the guy in that moment. So then the NFL said, no more touchdown celebrations. I think every fan thought that was ridiculous. That's going to deter players from expressing themselves. It is often said that the NFL is the no fun league. The no fun league, not allowing celebrations, not allowing players to just be themselves a bit more on the field. And I think everyone was wanting a change. I think NFL recognized that. And it was sort of like, well, well, maybe we're going a hair too far here. These guys have personalities. Let's let them show it. The brief they gave their agency, Gray New York, was simple. Pay tribute to touchdown celebrations and let the players' personalities shine through. Commercial starts and it just looks like Odell and I are just, you know, out of practice and I throw a touchdown. You know, like how harmless, like where's this going? What what's this gonna be for? And all of a sudden it just, you know, that music clicks on. Now I I am a big fan of dirty dancing. I've probably seen it more than I should admit. And I owe it all to you. Music starts and I'm going into like my Patrick Swayze, you know, moves and Landon Collins over there. He's getting into it. He's dancing. The finale dance to Dirty Dancing, iconic. It touches generations. This was, you know, one of the biggest films, at least in my life, who doesn't know Dirty Dancing? I can't really think of a quarterback and receiver who you would have expected to see in those roles. Odell had not seen the movie before, so I don't know if he quite knew what he was getting into. OBJ dancing isn't a risk. OBJ was born for this moment. His celebrations, he's very, you know, flamboyant with his with his moves, you know? This is his moment. Eli took a risk, so Eli probably gets the, the nod for even putting himself out there. To have him try and be Johnny, the smoothest, most suave guy there is in, in movies, you gotta tip your hat to Eli. He went for it, he did it. And then of course you gotta do the iconic jump off the stage. I'm on the knees and doing the spin. I mean, I thought I was Patrick Swayze. I thought the head move, I thought the hips were moving, the feet were sharp. Just let him dance. I tell you what, though, the O-line showed out. They're the forgotten part of this whole ad. Those are big guys moving. Those are 325 pounds moving like that. Come on, you gotta give it to them. You know, yeah, offensive linemen are better dancers than you think. They got some, some nice feet. And then, of course, the scene with, like, the finger telling Baby or Odell to come over and run and, and do the, the jump. They're like, you'll definitely be able to just hold up Odell by yourself, right? I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. It's like, he's 200 pounds. Well, we weigh the same amount. I can't hold a 200 pound person above my head. I don't lift anything over my head as a quarterback. It's like the number one no-no. And they're like, oh, so we, we probably need to get a harness? I'm like, a thousand percent. He has comedy chops. He really does. And that ad shows it. That's why I love Eli. That's why I love Eli. Eli doesn't care. Eli put himself out there as Eli. Laugh at me if you want. It's fine. You know, when they when they approached me, you know, I didn't really jump right at it. I was a little nervous. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I can do that. The day before Super Bowl, someone from the NFL came up and said, hey, I saw your commercial. It's so funny. It's going to be a big hit. And I was with Peyton. He's like, what are you talking about? What's the, uh, what's the commercial? I showed him and he's like, this is going to be funny. So this spot debuted at the Super Bowl in Minneapolis where Philadelphia was playing the Patriots. You have the Patriots and you have the Eagles who hate me. So they're booing but they are cheering at the end because they want their teams celebrating touchdowns and playing good football. And that's kind of you know the message that I was excited about. When you consider that Eagles fans and Patriots fans were both coming together to cheer for the Giants, the NFL did something right there. It finished second in USA Today's 2018 Ad Meter and won three Leo Sports Awards. Once you realize what they're doing and why they're doing, I think I think all players would be like, well, yeah, thank you for at least remembering that they brought back the thing that we always love to do. Odell Beckham Jr., touchdown! You know, when I saw the finish cut, I felt that I was doing the moves a lot better than what they uh, displayed on TV. It didn't quite look how I, I felt uh, it was happening in my head, but I think makes it for a funnier commercial. In 2018, Amazon harnessed the power of celebrity to show what a disaster, though a funny disaster, it would be if its famous virtual assistant Alexa lost her voice. 
everyone has some kind of smart device that they talk to, Alexa being the most common. In Austin, it's 60 degrees with a... <laughs> Alexa? What if Alexa got sick, like lost their voice for a day? And that is the whole premise of this commercial. Alexa Wait, lost her voice. How is that even possible? We have the replacements ready, just say the word. I mean, it's Amazon. They own the world, so their budget could be whatever. Amazing cast. Anthony Hopkins, Cardi B, Rebel Wilson. They got Gordon Ramsay talking crap. I think the key to making this commercial work was that each iconic celebrity was playing into the heightened versions of who we think they are. Alexa, how far is Mars? Oh, God. How far is Mars? Well, how am I supposed to know? I've never been there. This guy want to go to Mars. <laughs> For what? Stars love leaning into their personas and having fun with it. It's great for their own brand, too. Call Brandon. I'm afraid Brandon is a little tied up. <laughs> Jessica? The use of celebrities who have a really distinctive personality characteristic actually makes a useful comparison for Alexa. She has some personality to her, but it's always a moderated, better personality than an extreme one like Gordon Ramsay. Show me a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. Pathetic. You're 32 years of age, and you don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Its name is the recipe, you <laughs> Like, if I ask you, how do you make a grilled cheese sandwich? You should tell me to get my shit together. Rebel Wilson loves an inappropriate moment, and boy, does she make the record scratch at a dinner party. Alexa, set the mood. Now setting the mood, you're in the bush, and you're just so dirty. Alexa, rebush, re reboot. A week before the game, Amazon got creative with the rollout strategy. They programmed Alexa to cough whenever users asked who would win the Super Bowl. Alexa, who's gonna win the Super Bowl? The team favored to win is the... <laughs> Is that <coughs> Amazon also started rolling out little teasers for the upcoming ad. The ad went viral and became the most watched spot on YouTube in 2018 with almost 50 million views. Not only did the public celebrate it, the industry embraced it as well, rewarding it with five Clio Awards and an Emmy nomination. By 2019, Alexa device sales soared from over 30 million to more than 100 million worldwide. What this thing hit on is it's better to have it than not to have it. It was a really big idea that was fun and beautifully executed. Thanks, guys, but I'll take it from here. You don't want to mess with something in your house that can hear all your deepest, darkest secrets. I treat Alexa with care. She's my best friend. Mean Joe Green, a member of Pittsburgh's legendary Steel Curtain, made his acting debut and stole the show in this classic 1980 Coca-Cola Super Bowl ad. This Coca-Cola ad is pure nostalgia for me. No one calls this Hey Kid Catch. This is the B. Joe Green commercial. He went from being one of the most feared athletes to one of the most beloved national treasures. Mr. Green? Yeah. Want my Coke? Mm -hmm. The 70s were the beginning of the Cola Wars, a famous rivalry between Coke and Pepsi that spanned decades. Coke had been the leader for almost 100 years, but Pepsi started to get more creative and aggressive with their marketing, threatening Coke's number one status. And that threat became reality with the Pepsi Challenge in 1975. This is the taste. This is the test. They went into malls and they put two cups side by side and asked which one you thought tasted better. They knew, because Pepsi is a sweeter drink, that people wouldn't choose the bite of Coca-Cola. Now I'm gonna pick this up and tell me which one you chose. Pepsi! And they were really leaning into that, leaning into the taste. It was a massive success for Pepsi and Coke knew they had to step up their game. If they weren't gonna win off of just taste and ingredients, they had to remind people what Coca-Cola stood for. And it's a drink that has a lot of emotional resonance. You know, we drink it as kids, we drink it with friends, we drink it with family, and it's like, what is the experience of drinking it? That, I think, was where Coca-Cola knew it could win. So McCann Erickson was tasked with revamping the Have a Coke and a Smile campaign. Copywriter Penny Hawkey came up with a simple story centered around an intimidating NFL player and a young fan. I think you're the best ever. Yeah, sure. So the ad is so memorable, primarily because of Mean Joe Green. This is Mean Joe Green. Part of that Steelers steel curtain. That's an iconic defense. Mean Joe Green earned his name on the field. He was that brutal. He was that hard hitting. It was so unexpected. 
They could have had Terry Bradshaw. Well, he's a quarterback. Roger Staubach, he's like a golden boy. Here you've got this gruff, mean, hardly known guy, and you didn't know what you were gonna get. That's what the ad hinges on. And that to me was the, the genius of it. When you're choosing talent, it's not just about picking who's the biggest name, who's the most famous, but who's the most relevant and right for your brand. Me and Joe Green being the first black American to lead a national campaign, that can't be underestimated. It was a big deal, especially when you're talking prime time. I remember watching it with my dad. He's limping off the field like he's in pain. And you watch the kid and he's brave but timid. Want my Coke? And Mean Joe is so mad. And then, you know. <sighs> okay. A Coke and, a smile. and then the next thing you know, Mean Joe's smiling at him, giving him his jersey. And they meet in the middle through Coke. Coke becomes the thing that brings them together, which has always been Coke's point, right? It's about bringing the world together. Even if you don't like football, you will relate to the, to the spot. People thought it would appeal to sports enthusiasts, but they were super surprised that moms loved it. I loved it as a teenage girl. And I wonder if it's because Penny wrote it. That spot became more interesting because a female put an emotional piece into it. It doesn't surprise me that this ad won two Gold Clio Awards. The ad is more than 40 years old and we're still talking about it. It's still regarded as one of the best Coke ads in history. The original ad also inspired the made-for-TV movie The Steeler and the Pittsburgh Kid, and shows from Sesame Street to The Simpsons to Family Guy have paid tribute to it. And this also did a lot for me, Joe Green. He went from being one of the most feared athletes to one of the most beloved national treasures, all from a Coke ad. The ad was a big win for Coke, too, cementing its position at the top of the soft drink industry and winning this particular battle in the Cola Wars. It's just beautiful. It shows that we can all have these moments where no matter what our mood is, something can bring us a little bit of joy. Two of Detroit's most famous exports, Chrysler and M&M, joined forces in 2011 in a powerful ad that put the Motor City back on the map. Holy shit. I remember seeing this ad on Super Bowl Sunday and saying, what the fuck am I doing with my career? I mean, listen, I just looked at it and I said, maybe I should get a Chrysler. I got a question for you. What does this city know about luxury? In 2011, when Wyden and Kennedy was tasked with creating a launch spot for the Chrysler 200, the automaker was still reeling from the 2008 recession and desperate to bring sales back to Detroit. Okay, it's been about 14 weeks now since we last ran production at our plant, and we got a great opportunity as a company, as a plant to really move forward. They had a timely need to get the Chrysler 200 out, and they needed to go back and grab the timeless meaning of, of Detroit. and.
how I thought about American cars.